Fire! Welcome! Well, it's a very exciting Funko Pop unboxing for me today because I've got my Festival of Fun order through from Funko Europe. Now then, before I get into this, the Festival of Fun, what was it? Because I got really confused because all the advertising that I saw on social media, all the promotion, like, all coming soon, this pop, this pop, this soda, that soda, blah, blah, blah. It was saying, like, Festival of Fun for ECCC, which is, like, the Emerald City Spring Convention. Yeah, when I looked at the glam shots of what I ordered and uh, one or two of the other Funko items that were being sold under this Festival of Fun thing, they had the New York Comic Con sticker on it. So... Is it part two of the New York Comic Con drops, or is it something to do with ECCC, which would be next spring anyway? Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't think Funko even really care anymore, do they? They'll just put stuff out and people will buy it, or they won't, but probably will. I think Funko have crossed that line from being a sort of niche company that sort of nerdy collectors like to being more or less in the mainstream now. I mean, in this country, you can buy Funko Pops in Tesco and Asda. It doesn't get any more mainstream than that. Funko, you're not cool anymore. <laughs> if you ever were. But these are two Pops, which is actually more that I wanted in this particular release than in part one of the NYCC releases. If you remember, I unboxed Moe's Shroot that I ordered from Aussie Collectibles, it was. That was a New York City Comic Con pop. But there is two here. Two that are in two of my favourite Funko lines. One of these I was kind of talked into getting, but I'll explain about that when I show it you. We've got one of these sort of puzzle box origami style sorters here that uh, seem to be fairly protective, although I say that, and uh, I was worried a pop was going to slide out of the sides there. Ooh, condition's not great. I mean, it's not too bad, but yeah, a little bit disappointed. But the first one I'll show you is number 146 in the Pop Ad Icons line. This is representing the Play-Doh brand, and it's Play-Doh Pete. And as you can see, it has got the Fall Convention or New York Convention sticker on it. So I don't know what all this ECC stuff is, but I'm not going to keep moaning about that. It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. Yeah, box is kind of a bit bowed at the back, look. Perhaps that sort of wasn't as protective as I thought it would be. I've ordered from Funko Europe plenty of times in the past. They've started doing these funny sort of things for about a year now. And my pops from Funko Europe have generally come in pretty mint condition. But this one is not a big deal, really. It's only on the back and no one's going to be looking at that. But here is Play-Doh Pete, of course. Everyone knows what Play-Doh is. If you ever a child, which I think most of us were, except Jason Clow, he was born as a 60-year-old man. You played with Play-Doh. It's a type of uh, colourful putty you got in many various colours. Make things out of it. If you made something, stick it in the oven for however long. And uh, then you've got a nice little model of something. But I think most, certainly young children, they just like sort of playing with it and making a mess and stuff. Uh, what have we got on the back here? It kind of looks like it's going to be a Funko line, but it's not. I think it's just a representation of an old Play-Doh ad. I've actually forgot that Play-Doh even had a little mascot, this little blonde-haired boy, Pete, here. It says on it, if I can read it, clean, not a clay, non-toxic. Wow. What a really catchy, child-friendly advertising tagline that is. Non-toxic. Not a clay, neither. Don't call it clay. Let's get Play-Doh Pete out. So I love the ad icon, so as soon as I knew this one was coming out, I had to have it. And plus it's a brand, unlike a lot of the ad icons that get released, it's a brand that I am familiar with. You know, we've had Play-Doh in the UK, probably as long as America or anywhere else have had it for that matter. Oh, it feels cold. Here he is. So, uh, Play-Doh Pete here, blonde hair. Well, kind of more yellow, really, as he's a very kind of bright, cartoony character. He's got a red beret on, so uh, perhaps he's a bit French. That's very stereotypical of me. I know there's more than just the French who wear berets. Frank Spencer, for instance, he wasn't French. He was English. And he's got, I think that would be maybe classed as sort of an artist-style shawl on, or like a long shirt. And then in his right hand, I think that's one of those Play-Doh cutters 
that you used to get in a lot of Play-Doh sets. I say used to, no doubt still do. A bit like a pizza cutter, I suppose, but without all the really sharp bits on. You can uh, kind of cut your Play-Doh up a lot easier rather than always using your hands. And his left hand is waving. He's got green trousers on. And um, what would that be? Kind of like an olive shoe, maybe? Yeah, that's really nice, that. Don't know how popular this pop's going to be. This one and the next one were the only ones I paid attention to for this so-called festival of fun. But I think the next one, the next pop I'm going to show you, is going to be my favourite of the two. Even though that was the one originally, I wasn't actually going to get it. But I'm glad that I have. Go on, get in, you sod. There he is, back in his box, Play-Doh Pete. Right, the next pop, it's a first for me this, although the line that it's in, the range, I've collected many of, particularly over this year, and you'll see plenty of unboxings in this range, but um, the type of pop it is, is my very first. I wasn't going to get this because a common version that's coming out, I've had it pre-ordered at Glass Shelf Collectibles for quite some time. I probably wouldn't have pre-ordered it if I realised that this was coming out because this is a really nice version. And what I'm talking about is number 239 in the Pop Rocks range. This is Jimi Hendrix, but wait, it's Blacklight Jimi Hendrix, which makes this my first Blacklight Funko Pop. So yeah, they've been a bit of a Funko fad over 2021, haven't they? And maybe um, part of 2020 as well. All the black lights that have been coming out. And to be fair, I think it's a nice concept because they make the box a little bit different. They make it with like a black base rather than the standard white pop box. Certainly for uh, characters like this, I mean, you can make a black light pop seem really trippy and psychedelic. So to do it for Jimi Hendrix was a no-brainer. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, for those who don't know, and if you don't know, then you need to get yourself a musical education. Uh, American guitarist and vocalist made it massive in the 60s. Really, he made it massive in the UK first and foremost. Uh, I think his former manager was uh, Chaz Chandler from The Animals, who were a British band successful in the 60s. And um, he helped Hendrix get established in the UK and then he got more success in America after that. But really like the box here. Uh, condition wise, I think this one is in better shape than Play-Doh Pete. Although, no, actually, it's kind of creased a bit at the back again here. Must be the way they packed them at Funko Europe. It's not a big deal for me. These are gonna go in protectors. They're gonna be facing this way on, obviously. I say obviously, um, some people display Funko Pops sideways, don't they? And uh, I've had to do it myself temporarily before. But no one ever displays them like that, do they? As cool as the back of the box looks. So yeah, there's uh, I think there's quite a few Jimi Hendrix Pops coming out now. We'll get him out, we'll have a closer look. And what I'll also do, as I do have a UV torch, I will put some footage up where I'm shining a light on him to see how he looks under black light, as it were. But that is really nice, that. That's so cool. It was Leroy Screwballs who said to me, I'm getting Jimi Hendrix. And he's not really a Pop Rocks collector, but I think he just really liked the look of this. And he's got other black light pops, mainly in the Marvel range. He's a fan of the black light range as a rule anyway. But he said to me, are you getting that? You know, I know you like the Pop Rocks. I said, well, I've pre-ordered the common. It might be one of a few commons, maybe, but it's the live in Maui and um, I know that's out now but not at the place where I've ordered it from what I'll do with the common Jimi Hendrix I'll put it in a giveaway or an act of kindness um, just whenever I get it I hate pre-ordering for Funko because there's just no specific dates Funko just seems to send things out to retailers as and when and nobody really knows when anything's coming in stock but anyway, look at his multicoloured hair, his really psychedelic, 60s, trippy afro. His face looks great as well, I mean he's got this yellow face that's gonna show up really well in black light. Little goatee there, he's got his eyes closed. Does look a lot like Jimi Hendrix, even with all the multicoloured facets to this. And there he's got his guitar that he's playing, left-handed I believe he'll be playing it like that kind of rainbow suit on here rainbow trousers and shoes with I think pink soles 
I can't wait to see what this looks like under the UV torch and uh, obviously you will have seen that footage in this video by now but um, my first black light pop part of the pop rocks range an NYCC slash festival of fun exclusive can't be bad at all and there we go Jimi Hendrix the rock legend of the 1960s um, I think it was early 1970s when he tragically passed away at rather a young age. Great addition to my Funko Pop collection, more specifically the Pop Rocks collection. I'm also very happy with Play-Doh Pete here as well. Another great ad icon of an iconic brand. Bit of a shame about the creasing at the back of the boxes for these, but um, I think this is the first time I've ever not got quite so lucky with box condition from Funko Europe. I know they've had a lot of complaints ever since they started really. And while they have made improvements in packaging, I don't think they've quite kind of nailed it yet, but um, it's no big thing for me. Both of these are gonna go in ATV pop protectors and be displayed in box. So thank you to all of you for watching this video. Thank you especially to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons. Please see my description text box, it's down below or it's somewhere around depending on what device you're using to watch this YouTube video. There you will find my Funko affiliate links for discounts on pops and protectors and all sorts Funko related. There's a referral for contents insurance and there's my Patreon link and Facebook group link, all in the description text box. I'm gonna go now, and as I say, gonna display my first black light pop, the king, well it's not the king, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix, that's Elvis, but uh, I suppose Jimi Hendrix was kind of a king of the 60s psychedelic movement in his own way, and um, just a very unique individual and musician. And of course, display Play-Doh Pete as well. And I do hope that all of you will join Pete, Jimmy, and this Jimmy next time for my next Funko Pop unboxing. Cheers, everyone. See ya!